Triggering is one of the most exciting features of a digital storage oscilloscope. Triggering. A trigger is a voltage level that when the signal process passes through it, causes the oscilloscope to capture or lock on the waveform. If you don't set a trigger, the trace may not be stable on the screen. You could also miss the signal you're looking for. Here you can see that this is the pattern we had in an earlier exercise where I set the time base to 500 microseconds. The pattern is jumping all over the screen. I'm going to move my zero down closer to the trigger set so that you can see it a little bit better. Down in the bottom here is our trigger settings. Right now it's set to none. We have three settings. We have auto, repeat, and single. Auto will pause and look for a signal, and if it doesn't see one, it will start recording anyways. Repeat will pause and wait for a signal. If it never sees a trigger signal, it will never continue to play or record. And single will act like repeat, except for in single, it'll take one buffer window and then automatically stop, where repeat will continue to record multiple buffer windows. Since I have a signal, I'm going to go ahead and put it on auto. Now you'll notice here that the pattern automatically freezes on the screen. Now this yellow dot here, that is my trigger setting. I have it set on one volt. And there's two other settings down here. This one is called the rising edge, and this is called the falling edge. As voltage rises up above one volt, it starts to draw this pattern. Everything before this trigger in this area right here is called the pre-trigger. If we take and we move this too far to the left, what will happen is you won't have enough pre-trigger and you've just lost some of your pattern. If I move it back a little bit more centered, we now have our pre-trigger and we can see the entire pattern that we're looking for. Now this setting sets the trigger on the falling edge. If I choose that option, you notice the pattern shifted over and this is the falling edge and this is where it first reaches one voltage here. And that's where it's going to start to draw the pattern. So everything before that is my pre-trigger. If I lower this trigger down to somewhere around a half a volt, you notice now that it'll trigger on the falling edge here because this meets the criteria of the falling edge at that half a volt level. If I move it back over to the rising edge, it will shift over to the half a volt on the rising edge. In addition to just moving the trigger around by clicking and dragging, you can use the controls down at the bottom of the screen. These controls will control the location or the voltage value of your trigger. And these controls control the pre-trigger. There's 50%, 40%, 30%, and then when I get to 20%, I've lost too much of my pre-trigger. This is very exciting because it allows us to take a pattern that's jumping around on the screen with no trigger and see that pattern clear as day. Notice that there's no trigger right now. As I set it to repeat, the trigger shows on the screen. As the voltage rises above the trigger point, you'll get a pattern waveform on the screen. As long as I continue to rise above the trigger, we continue to get a pattern. I have to stop it myself. Now if we look at the navigator, we'll see that we got three buffers and I've got two patterns, one on buffer one and one on buffer two. However, if I come down and I set my trigger at a single trigger, then we will get one buffer on the screen as the voltage rise above the trigger. Notice that it stopped automatically all by itself, and we only have one screen in the buffer. If the trigger value is set outside of the proper range, such as setting it too high, you'll find that the pattern will be unstable, or it won't show up at all. 
or if you set it too low, you'll get a similar instance. If you have two patterns or you're running multiple traces, you can trigger off of the other channel. You just come down to this value down here and this allows you to check what channel you want to trigger off of. Now this trigger showed up here way above the top of the scale and that is why we're not getting a stable trigger. If I bring this down within the operating range of that signal, we will all of a sudden now get our trigger off of that amperage value. Once again, a little bit too high, becomes unstable, bring it down within the proper range, and you trigger properly. Get below the proper range, and it won't trigger properly at all.